What you're seeing right now is called generative AI. It's straight from Adobe and allows you to use AI to do creative generative things like add stuff to images, update it, or even remove objects based on text prompts. It's very similar to Midjourney and AI art, but specifically embedded into software. And in this case, it's Adobe Photoshop. This is what I wanna take a look at in this video. I wanna see how this could be practically used for things like web design, which is something I'm always using Adobe Photoshop for. I want to start off simply. Here's a photo of myself, and I've got this keyboard on the right hand side. It's on top of the books, and I'll select remove, and now it's gone. Let me try this again. Here's my mobile phone. It's an Apple iPhone. I'm going to select to remove it as well. This one didn't go quite as planned. Adobe replaced it with some sort of a square, so I don't really like that. Let me try something different. Here's my iPad. I'll select it, and this time for the prompt, I want to replace it. I'm going to replace it with a notepad. Photoshop Generative AI gives three variations. I had a look at all three, and I liked the one here in the middle. This one actually had a bit of a focus shift. As things got closer to the camera, they were more blurry, which is a really cool thing to see. Let me replace another object. Here's my cup of coffee, and I want to replace this with maybe a glass of water. Pretty impressive. It even has the reflections of the book in the background, which means that it's definitely taking context of the entire image before it replaces different objects. Another powerful tool this AI has is the ability to extend out images based on the context of the image so far. Here, I'm gonna try and give myself a bit more horizontal room, some room at the top and at the bottom. I'm gonna select these areas, and this time I'm not gonna enter anything in the generative fill prompt. I'm just gonna leave it blank and I'll let it do its own thing. It extended out the table quite well, pulling in the exact same textures that were happening before, as well as my ceiling being more fleshed out. Let me see if it can fill out a laptop here on the left hand side and maybe even close off the table. And here's what Photoshop has extended the image to. It definitely added the curve around the top left of that laptop, and it's exactly how it actually is in real life. And I'm by no means a great Photoshopper, and yet all these changes only just took a few minutes. Here's a website design I put together called The Back Beach. I thought I could update this image so it had more room for things like the text. So what I've done is pulled it here into Photoshop. The way I used to extend images was doing content-aware fill. And this kind of works, but it's kind of like cloning the same objects over and over, and you see this repeating pattern of the same people on the beach. Not that great. There's also some blur, and it just doesn't look good. Let me try this with generative AI this time. The results kind of speak for themselves. I could use the AI to expand out the bottom of the design as well as the sky too. And if you're wondering why I would do this, well, if you have larger images with more content, it's easier to play around with them once they're inside of a website because smaller images mean that you often have to crop different elements out of the frame and you just don't get to see them. Now that I have the power of AI, I feel like I can pretty much do anything. Here, let me see if I can add some clouds in the sky. How about maybe some seagulls too? Uh, that might be a little bit too large. Let's make them smaller. No, smaller. No, even smaller. And there's not enough people swimming in the sea. Let's fix that up. As you can tell, there's a lot of fun to be had with this new AI from Photoshop. I'm going to show you a really cool trick that you can do with it for web designs in just a second. Because I wanted to show off some really cool AI tech from Notion, today's sponsor. Notion is a powerful project management solution that basically integrates documents, notes, and wikis all together. Notion is where I actually do all my documentation and project planning for websites and content. I'm currently working on a startup called Dib, and this is inside of Notion Projects, which makes it easy to keep track of all my documentation as well as all my tasks and sprints. But that wasn't always the case. I used to have these inside of Google Sheets, and boy, was that annoying to keep track of. If you're ever planning to build a large website with a client or a group of people, try out Notion for its sprints and its Trello-like boards, as well as its task management. They've now implemented really cool AI generation inside of their tables that can pull data out straight from the content of each one of the tasks and give you summaries as well as ideas of what needs to be done straight in the table view. I'll add a link in the description where you guys can check this out. Now I'm gonna have a bit of fun. I'm going to build a website using just a generative AI from Adobe Photoshop. I have this brand new website on Editor X with just the logo here for the header. And the header is where I wanna start. I'll open up a brand new Photoshop file in 1080p and I'll select just the very top of the website where the header will be. And I'll ask for just some sky. 
I want the sky to kind of apply at the very top. And here's a few examples that the AI has generated. I didn't like any of these, so I did some regeneration. And these ones were much more soft and blended into the white color. So I like this last one, and I'm going to export this one as a JPG, and then import it straight into the website. I'll apply it as the background layer for this header section, and I'll expand it out so it's using all of the space here in terms of the header. That kind of looks good. It definitely blends into the white, and I think it's subtle enough that it doesn't distract the user while still making the page look a little bit more interesting. Next, I asked the AI to generate a beach for me. This is what I got, which isn't bad for demo purposes. I exported it, and then I'm going to import this into the website. I'm going to create a new section here, and I'm going to fill the background with the beach image. I'll upload the image just over here as a JPG, and once it's in, I should be able to resize it and fit different elements in. To resize, I just simply dragged it up, and now I've got enough space here with a little bit of a sky where I could put a title in, and this is what I'll do now. I think I'll do it more or less the same as it was before, so something like Welcome to the Back Beach Restaurant, and I'll find a nice font so that it matches the style of the previous website design. To make it more interesting, I'll break it into two parts, and the first part can be Welcome To in smaller font, and the second part will be a larger font, I think, that can stand out and maybe even be centered, and maybe a slightly different color, similar to the primary colors of the logo. Currently, this looks like the red, which also kind of works as a little bit of a sun at the top left of the corner there, so I think these colors work quite well together. With that done, I might make sure that the welcome to part isn't a complete black, but it's just a slight gray. And these sections are now done. I can create a new section here where we have the sand. And with websites, it's good to transition different types of colors together. So here I could continue on that sand color and it almost blends in perfectly. I could reduce the size of the beach itself so that anyone landing on this page should be able to see it properly on desktop. And then I could maybe add an overlay or a menu item here or some call to actions. I might actually move this over to the left hand side so that everything is aligned to the left. And I'll add in a container here where maybe I'll have the restaurant menu. In order for the container to look good and stand out, let's swap it from this gray color to the primary color that we're using for the logo. And let's actually add an image for it, maybe a placeholder image. And let's use AI for that as well. I'll jump back into Photoshop and create a new small box of 1024 by 1024. I want to generate a dish, a meal of steak and chips, and I'll write that in. And there we have it. This isn't too bad. It looks kind of like stock photography that you would normally get, but this way I don't have to pay for the stock photography, which definitely makes it a lot easier and good for placeholder content. No longer will I have to use maybe display pics or just even a blank space for where an image has to be. I can instead use AI art now to generate that so people can get an idea of what the design should look like. But I think I can take this one step further. First, let me fill out the title here so that it actually just say lunch menu or something of that sort. And what I'm thinking is maybe I should use mid journey and the AI art in mid journey to generate the actual food because it probably has more realistic styling than what the Photoshop generative AI can do. So that's what I did. I jumped into discord and I typed in a dish of steak and fries with salad on a plate as a mid journey 5.1 prompt and I think these dishes look really good. I like the one here at the very top left. So I'm going to select to copy paste that one into Photoshop because I don't want fries in there. I just want a nice salad. I think that would look more green and healthy. So I selected the chips and I used generative AI to get rid of them and now they're gone. There is some empty space here, so I selected that empty space just so that it could be filled out with a little bit more of the salad. Then I exported this straight into the website and replaced it with the previous image. That looks way more classy and also quite delicious. What do you guys think of the Adobe Photoshop generative AI? Personally, I found it a lot of fun and mixed in with mid journey and AI art, I think that it could be used for a lot of purposes for web design.